In this problem, we're looking at a brick sliding across the table, starting from rest. There's an applied force of 22 newtons causing this to happen. There's also a kinetic friction coefficient causing it to end up slower than it would otherwise. And we're going to handle this by using work and energy. So the first question is, what's the work done by the 22 newton force? And it doesn't get any more straightforward. The work is going to be the parallel component of the force multiplied by the displacement. And in this case, the entire force points parallel to the displacement. So there's nothing complicated happening here. I just take my 22 newtons and multiply by one and a half meters, and I get 33 joules of work. In part B, I want to get the work done by friction, and of course, this takes a little more prep work. I'm going to get force vectors in on the brick. Remember, friction depends on the normal force, but the normal force depends on how hard gravity is pulling down. So gravity is pulling down with the strength of mg, that's 3.1 times 9.8, and that comes out to 30.4. Newtons. Now in this case, there's no other force tampering with the vertical direction. So the normal force is quite simple. It has to be equal to mg in order to balance it perfectly so that I get no acceleration in the vertical direction. So the normal force must be 30.4 newtons. And then my friction force is going to oppose the direction of slipping. And that's given by an fk equals mu k times the normal force, where my kinetic friction coefficient is given by 0.55. So let's go ahead and write the friction force over here. That's mu k times n. That's 0.55 times 30.4. So as this brick is sliding along, I get a force of 16.7 newtons opposing the direction of slipping. So if we're following a sign convention here, we could put a minus sign on that to indicate that it points to the left. What about the work done by friction? So here it's worth uh, maybe giving you a little reminder that this F parallel notation that we used for part A is a little bit ambiguous. What we really mean is F cosine theta times delta x, where that theta is the angle between the displacement vector and the force vector. And what we're looking at in this case is a force vector pointing the opposite direction of the displacement vector. So the angle is 180, cosine of 180 is negative 1. In other words, we get negative work, just a minus sign on this 16.7 newtons multiplying 1.5 meters. And it makes sense. Friction is sucking energy out of the system, and I get negative 25.1 joules. In part C, I want to compute the work done by the normal force. And if I go back up to my diagram, I can see that the normal force is perpendicular to the displacement, which means I'm going to get a cosine of 90 degrees in the expression for work. But the cosine of 90 degrees is 0, and I get 0 work. Another way of saying it is the parallel component of the force is 0 if the force is perpendicular to the displacement. And this is a little reminder of a, a general principle in physics. The normal force is what's called a constraint force. It's just there to guide the path of the object. Constraint forces are always exerted perpendicular to the direction of motion, and therefore, I have this popular phrase, forces of constraint do no work. Finally, we're going to get the speed of the brick. And so the idea is that we're using the work energy theorem. In other words, if I look at the total work done on this thing, all the energy inputs and all the outputs, and sum them all up, that's going to give me the change in the kinetic energy, which is the final value of kinetic energy minus the initial. And we started from rest, so the initial value was zero. So my net work is 33 joules in, 25.1 joules out. My final kinetic energy, one half times the mass times the final speed squared. And I simplify that difference, multiply by 2, divide by 3.1, and I get v squared equals 5.097. Don't forget to square root the thing. And V comes out to 2.26 meters per second. If you find the physics content on Zach's Lab helpful, click on the Zach's Lab logo on the right to browse playlists and subscribe to the channel. I produce over 100 new videos per month, and subscribing is the easiest way to find new content. Thanks for watching.